Aluna is a 6-6 flying and trampling beast elemental dinosaur for 2 generic mana and a green, blue, and red. Now these are some great stats, but it also has mutate for 3 generic, 2 blue, and either 1 red or 1 green. When this creature mutates, you exile a card from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent. You can either put that card into your hand or onto the battlefield. So Aluna lets us cheat non-land permanents onto the battlefield and it's crazy fun to do. Now to me, this is the perfect casual commander as it's letting you cheat stuff into play, but it's all a gamble in terms of what you'll hit. The deck can obviously be powered up with top deck manipulation cards, but I found that not including those type of cards like Scroll Rack or Sensei's Divining Top make the mutate ability much more fun and exciting. The deck also seems really balanced and not overpowered because of the mutate restriction. There are only a handful of mutate cards in these colors and not all are as good as others, but nonetheless the deck is still very fun to pilot. So let's get into the first deck category, Ramp. With this deck, we want to make sure a majority of our cards are permanents, so that includes a ramp. The first two cards we want to showcase are lands and common command staples for nearly every deck. Myriad Landscape and Temple of the False God are fantastic and cheap cards. Myriad Landscape comes into play tapped, but we can pay to sacrifice it, and search for two basic lands of one color of our choice to not only ramp us, but color fix our mana to our specific needs. Temple of the False God playing out tapped for 2 mana, but we need to control 5 or more lands to do so. It may not be the best idea to keep an opening hand with the temple, but late game this card just does wonders, especially since it's not too hard getting to 5 lands. If you want to pick up any of these common command staples, head on over to the description below and click our TCG player affiliate link where you can shop for these cards or anything else that might catch your eye in today's episode. Next we have some artifact ramp with Soul Ring, Talisman of Creativity and Curiosity, and Is It and Simic Signet. Now these are amazing 1 and 2 drops that help speed up our gameplay and get us ahead of our opponents. We want our ramp to be early so we can use turn 4 and 5 to splash out some big plays. These cards can also be put onto the battlefield with our commander so it's always fun to run these over Farseek and Ramping Growth because those cards can get exiled forever. Lastly we have some creature ramp with Paradise Druid, Curious Follower, Gilded Goose, and Migratory Greathorn. These are great additions to the deck because they have dual purposes. They are fantastic mutate targets for a commander, especially since Paradise Druid has hexproof when untapped. Additionally, Migratory Greyhorn also has mutate, which we can use early on to ramp us, or save for when our commander comes into play to cash in on some extra value. Mana Dorks are very powerful in this deck, but let's move on to another important deck category, Card Draw. Since our deck is very creature heavy, most of our cards play off of that as it relies on us playing creatures to get the draw. Tamir Ascendancy, Kyura Behemoth Beckoner, Garuk's Pack Leader, and Elemental Bond are inexpensive yet powerful card draw engines. They only make us playing creatures that much stronger. But drawing cards is not all they do. Tamir Ascendancy gives our creatures haste, Kyura untaps permanents such as lands, which is technically ramp, and Garuk's Pack Leader is another mutate target for a Luna. These are great cards that should not be overlooked, but we've got some more engines of card draw. Mystic Remora and Insight are great enchantments to play early on because they build us so much value throughout the game. We'll have to pay a cumulative upkeep cost for Remora, and Insight only really works if our opponents are playing green, but most games, they'll generate us a ton of value. If you have the funds to upgrade a card and add in Rhystic Study, I don't see why you wouldn't do that as it fits perfectly into the deck. The last 4 cards I have are creatures and yes they draw as cards, but I see them more as value plays within the deck instead of purely card draw. Consecrated Sphinx will draw us a ton of cards if we can get it to stay on the battlefield, even for just one turn. Tatsuyova Benthic Druid is another great engine that rewards us for playing lands and helps replenish a bit of our life total. Mormir Vig Simic Visionary was just added to my Luna deck and man this card is pure value. Getting to tutor and draw specific creatures by casting Simic creatures is just way too powerful to not be mentioned. And lastly, Karuga the Macro Sage is another overlooked yet strong card draw creature that'll surprise you by how many cards it can net you. We have more card draw creatures in the deck, but let's move on to what the deck is about, and that is the pure value Tamir has to offer. So the main focus of this deck is to drop down some great value cards, mainly creatures, and apply a ton of pressure onto our opponents. With no true goal in mind other than flooding the board with some beaters, this deck still performs crazy good. I first want to focus in on some early drop plays that set us up for a Luna. Reclamation Sage, Coiling Oracle, and Animar Soul of Elements are cards you're aiming to play because they're great mutate targets, especially since Animar will get your commander huge with plus one plus one counters and give it the annoying protection from black and white, 
as well as make every other creature we play cost much less, and that cost reduction does count towards mutate. Polywog Symbiote is another great early play because it'll make all of our mutate cost one less, and then when we do cast a creature with mutate, we get to loot. It also has the amazing Baby Godzilla art, so there is literally no reason not to run it. Next, we have one of my newest favorite commander cards, Tidal Barracuda. For a mere 4 mana, you get a 3-4 fish creature that lets everyone cast spells at flash speed. However, opponents can't cast spells during your turn. This is an amazing creature that everyone loves to see played because our opponents get flash, but they won't be able to disturb us on our turn. It goes unnoticed and just allows us to build so much value without having to worry about any responses. Proud Wild Bonder is next, and this card is a major sweeper. It's a 4-3 with Trample that makes all of our Trample creatures assign combat damage as if they weren't blocked. This card can just win us games, as a majority of our creatures already have Trample, and we can get a ton of them out from our deck in a single turn, as well as some haste generators like Samut Tyrant Smasher. This card alone might be enough reason to run Garut's Uprising, another form of card draw. Ilharg the Razebore and Corsewood Crasher are a pair of 5 CMC beaters. We have a lot of creatures with ETB effects, so getting to do it multiple times with Ilharg is super strong, and Quartzwood Crasher is going to provide us with big old blockers for when we swing out. Speaking of ETB creatures, Tashana Voice of Plenty and Prime Speaker Zagana are perfect top deck hitters that can get us a ton of cards. These are cards we want to cheat out with our commander's ability, and if we do, they will provide us with enough value to take control of the game. Nyxbloom Ancient and Nezahal Primal Tide are another pair of creatures that will provide us with enough value to really outdo our opponents. Now there are a ton of value creatures that can fit into this deck, so I encourage you all to take a look and see which ones will increase the power of it. Let me know in the comments what you find that should be in the deck list. Now we've got all this value, but we need more mutate to keep the deck going. Having more mutate creatures is needed if we want to play stuff from our library for free, which unfortunately is a little bit of a downside. Not to say mutate is bad, because there are some powerful mutate creatures, but we have to reserve spots for mutate creatures, and there are only a handful in these colors to begin with. Parasol Beast, Lord Dracus, and Sea Dasher Octopus are two CMC mutate creatures that won't cost as much in terms of mana, but can be very rewarding with our commander. Gem Razor is another cheap mutator that's going to let us destroy an artifact or enchantment. Pouncing Shore Shark will let us keep the board in control by bouncing creatures, while Dreamtail Huron will provide us with card draw. Aspicuous Sterix is one of the best mutators in the deck, I think even better than our commander. It gets us a permanent from the top of our library for each time this creature has mutated. I've had this be up to at least 6 permanents and getting land is no bummer as it lets us continue to play spells on our turn. If you're a little bit confused on how the mutate mechanic works, I'll give a quick description towards the end of the video, but feel free to ask any unanswered questions in the comment section below. But let's move on on how we can maximize our commander's ability and get exactly what we want from it. Like I said, the deck can be powered up by manipulating the top of our deck. Simple cards like Brainstorm and Ponder will not only draw us cards, but allow us to specifically set it to where we get something big when our commander mutates. Sensei's Divining Top is another great example of this, but it's on the expensive end, so why not substitute it out with Crystal Ball? If you got Scroll Rack money, then by all means put it in the deck, but Sood saying gets the job done just as good for a fraction of the price. Orchish Librarian is another real fun card that just fits into the fun and chaotic theme of the deck that will do the same thing as all these other cards. Even cards that simply just let you scry like Mystic Speculation can be enough value to make the deck list. It's up to you how you want to build and play the deck, but I find it's most fun going into the game not knowing what you'll hit and really relying on the Gods of Chaos to give me something good. But now let's move on to our final category, Protection and Interaction. Now although this deck accumulates a ton of value, it's still a bit glass cannony as we mainly rely on combat damage to finish out games. Now this isn't hard to do, but can be disrupted by our opponents. Rhythm of the Wild and Destiny Spinner ensure that the creatures we cast make it to the battlefield. Rhythm of the Wild also has the benefit of being a haste enabler to help close off games. Our removal package includes Rapid Hybridization, Beast Within, Ram Through, Curse of the Swine, and Chaos Warp. These will help us get rid of any creatures or permanents that may pose as a major threat to our game plan. Nature's Claim is another one of my favorite removal spells as it only costs 1 green to remove either an artifact or enchantment, a true overperformer. We've also got Devastation Tide and Flood of Tears to help reset the board when things get out of control. Bouncing is actually really good in this deck because if we run out of mutate creatures, we can simply bring them back to our hand and keep the deck rolling. Bouncing is so effective, it may be worthwhile adding Crystal Shard to the deck. And last up is our counter spells. 
We'll mainly use them to help protect our board and get through with combat, but stopping others from winning the game is always fun too. Counterspell Negate and Arcane Denial are cheap yet effective cards, but if you recently pulled a Force Will from Double Masters, why not add it to the deck? And with that, the deck is complete. We didn't go over every 100 cards, but if you're interested in a complete deck list, click the link in our description to see what else made the cut. I also didn't talk much about lands during the video. My best advice is to play with what's available to you. Having a bunch of basic lands is okay as you can always upgrade as you go. Never let limits and restrictions stop you from building a deck you want to play. Play with what you got. That also carries on to this next part. This deck tech is just a guideline, a reference on how to build a Luna. You don't need every card listed today to make it fun and powerful. I'm more interested to see what you guys include in the deck and if I missed any auto includes. I came close to turning this into a planeswalker deck just because it sounds so much fun to do, but that's what's great about the commander, it's very versatile in its playstyles. How do you want to build it or what will you add to the deck? Let me know by commenting below. I also want to give a quick description of how mutate works. Mutate is an alternate casting cost to a creature, so yes you're still casting the creature which will trigger any casting abilities. To mutate, you must first have a non-human target to mutate over. When mutated, you decide whether you want the creature on top or under the target. They will then fuse into one creature and keep all abilities of every creature that's added to the mutation, but the power and toughness will be that of the creature on top. When mutating, if your target you're mutating onto is destroyed, the creature doesn't fizzle and still enters the battlefield, but it doesn't get the mutation effect. A mutated creature dies as one single creature, and if bounced they will leave as one, but return separately. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask or correct anything that I said that was incorrect. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to show that appreciation. And remember, we have a Patreon with some of the best benefits. Give it a look and see which tier is right for you. With all that, we'll catch you in the next video.